Hello fellow cyborgs, today I'm going to talk about my favorite books of 2021. We're going to start out with my favorite book of the year because I don't think it's going to surprise many of you who've been watching some of my recent videos. It's Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I read this book originally in May in 2021 and then I reread it for the Witchathon at the in October and November of 2021. So I read it twice in one year. I gave it five stars both times. I read the audiobook both times actually, which is narrated by Avi Roque, who is like the author and like the main character, a Latino trans man. In this YA fantasy, our protagonist Yads is trying to prove to his family that he can be a brujo and tap into the masculine power magic that his family has, whereas they insist that because he refuses to use bruja magic, the feminine version, he just won't have magic at all. In this quest to prove to his family, he's trying to figure out what happened to his cousin who was recently murdered and along the way becomes connected with another newly formed ghost named Julian. Their relationship is slow burning, patient, compassionate, and wonderful. I love Julian's neurodivergent perspective. I read him as ADHD and his disconnect with school and why his life turned into certain ways because of that. I love the representation of transness and how Yods has to navigate this family he loves who just refuses to treat him the way that he wants to be treated. And I love how Yods is not alone because his family still does love him and he has also unconditional family members in his cousin and best friend Maritza and also in his mother who is dead but we know that she was there for him. The the plot of this book did not keep me guessing, but I was still incredibly motivated and satisfied at the end. It was lovely. And my second reading experience, I felt the same things that I did the first. So if you haven't picked this up yet, but you think that you might enjoy it a smidge, please pick it up. It is just lovely and was my favorite book of 2021. The most recent five star in 2021 I gave was to Wayaka, The Bird Who Fell in Love with the Sun by Cindy M. Elvitre and illustrations by Carly Lake. This is a creation myth and also explanation myth of the Tongva people upon whose land I live. And I read it for Indigathon in 2021. I love the illustrations in this book. Even though Carly Lake is not an indigenous author, the illustrations had, and it kind of reminded me of the imagery I've seen with indigenous Australian art, but also in these beautiful watercolors. And it was just such a really interesting combination of world creation myth and then explanation of a, how a creature came to be, which is native or at least it was native to where I live. I don't know how native it is now. I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the illustrations. And I also really enjoy how this book kind of represents to me to check my white privilege that I get to live where I get to live because of a huge oppression and subjugation of peoples. And it sucks. And it's just good to know that sometimes things suck. This book does not suck. You should read it. It is really good. I highly recommend it. Five out of five stars. One of my favorites of the year. In 2021, I finished the Simon Snow trilogy by Rainbow Rowell. I reread Carry On and I continued through the series and eventually read this right after it came out. This end of the trilogy was everything that I could have hoped for and more. The tenderness between Simon and Baz and us seeing how they work through the pitfalls in their relationship and find ways to communicate with one another and sculpt their relationship to fit both of them equally well was just wonderful. I loved that modeling so much. This also ties up so many, mostly it's just like the one loose thread of are they going to be able to to each Simon and Baz, are they going to be able to have closure with their parents? And yes is the answer. I also really enjoyed Shepard's plotline and Penny's plotline, as well as Agatha and I think Siobhan, who's a new character in this book. I found them pretty much equally as compelling as Simon and Baz. And most of the time, like a comforting breather between the emotional heaviness of Simon and Baz's storyline. So this is just a really fun series. I enjoy how this series lets me engage 
intellectually with Harry Potter and also with the love I have for the fantasy of that world without having to actually read Harry Potter and deal with the inherent transphobia that is now I notice within the text and also just can't unnotice by the authorship. I highly recommend this trilogy if you are into young adult fantasy and you specifically also love some LGBTQIA2S plus themes in there. It is, or relationships rather than themes, it is really good quality. I loved this final to the trilogy and this book would make me potentially reread the second book, which was uh, just an anxiety pit for me. So loved this. Another top book of 2021. Early, early in the year, I listened to the audiobook of The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones and the audiobook is Chef's Kiss, which is narrated by Sean Taylor Corbett. This is a horror novella by an indigenous author, I believe he's Blackfeet, about these four friends who did something wrong together as young men, and now they are paying the price. It is very much nature coming back to haunt you for the mistakes that you have done. It also ties in with betraying your own cultural heritage and also just being able to understand how you are going to represent within yourself and in your life your native heritage. I also love that one of the big themes for one of the characters' perspectives, because this book is divided into four perspectives of the four different friends, though it weaves together seamlessly, one of these perspectives in particular has the trope that I love, which is, is this really happening to me or am I going insane? Is one of my favorite things. This is gory at times, but I could handle it. And the ending was just so good. Justice is served, but for like all parties. And I, it's just really good. I probably need to own my own copy. The only thing is I would probably only read this on audiobook. So maybe I just need to own an audiobook of this. This was the first Graham Jones that I read, but I have since read Night of the Mannequins by him and also really enjoyed it. So I think I will be definitely reading at least two more Graham Jones coming up in 2022. And I hope that I enjoy them just as much as, or even come close to enjoying it as much as The Only Good Indians. Another five-star loved it audiobook of this year was Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, which the audiobook is narrated by Renee Dorian, and I really, really enjoyed that narration as well. This got a lot of hype a couple years ago in the booktube community, but I finally got to it this year at the, mm, I want to see it was in March or something like that. It is such an autumnal feeling. It's about our main character, Ollie, who's dealing with the grief over the death of her mother. She finds this really odd old book, starts to read it, and then goes on a class field trip to a local farm and realizes that the book is connected to the farm and something bad is going on. It is incredibly autumnal. It is the best middle grade horror that I have read. There were scenes that were chilling to me without it feeling age inappropriate. It was just creepy enough. The villain is incredibly compelling. And I loved just like the lore and mythology that was built up in this old book that she was reading and how it trickles into her experience. I also love the, the other characters. Coco and Brian are extremely excellent foils for Ollie or compliments for Ollie and seeing how their relationship, their begrudging relationship at the beginning of the story and then their budding friendship, it's just so good. This also has one of the best devices for communicating with the dead and how that comes out, like how that actually functions that I've ever read in literature. It is brilliant. I love it so much. I loved this book so much that I immediately read the next book in the series and then chomped at the bit for the third book to, re to be released, which was released in 2021. And now I have already pre-ordered the fourth book, which I think is the final book in this series. It is such good middle grade horror. It is so great. And every single one of the books so far has been in a different season and they have been equally atmospheric and just so great. I love this series so much and one day I will own 
I well, I almost own all of the audiobooks. I just don't own the first one yet. I borrowed that from the library, but I'm sure one day I will just to have my collection in my grubby little hands. So Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. The hype is real. You should read it. It is excellent. And then my final five star of the year is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. What? I know. It's a really good book, isn't it? Yeah. This is a post-apocalyptic urban fantasy set with near entirely indigenous cast of characters. The post-apocalyptic thing, if you know me on my channel, I that is not something that I engage with because apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic stories tend to be uber rapey and I just can't and I won't anymore. This, however, is not. And I also love how you slowly piece together what happened and what the state of the world looks like. It's not made clear at the beginning because the characters don't care. It slowly unfolds. And that world building was one of the funnest things about this book and the follow-up book, which I also read this year. So this follows Maggie, who's a monster hunter. She has gifts supernatural gifts that allow her to be very good at hunting down and killing monsters, which is imperative in her community. However, nobody likes her. Nobody wants to hang out with her. She doesn't have any family because she's surrounded by death and it's just not a good look. She ends up begrudgingly having to pair with this young man who's new into town named Kai. They go on this journey to figure out what what is causing these monsters to traipse through their community. Kai is my new fictional crush because he's just so approachable and respectful and flirty and fun and kind. And he's complicated for sure. But I think that this was one of the, in my recent memory, one of the only representations of a masculine character that didn't kind of frighten me a little. I just have such a wariness uh, unfortunately around a lot of masculine people. And Kai just never gave me that. So I never had this, this weird, um, like, oh, set myself from a distance a little bit because who knows what you're capable of doing. And so as dark and gruesome as this book is at times, there was also an element of safety that I felt somehow, which is weird combination, but that is my experience. This is really fast paced, really fun read, even though it's dark at times. I enjoyed this so much that I immediately had to read the second book. And even though the second book did not wow me nearly as much as this one, the second book was kind of quite a bit darker too. It is still a series that I am eagerly awaiting the next edition of. So Trail of Lightning, five out of five stars. Really, really loved it. Before I go, I want to do a rapid fire review of the 4.5 star books that I read this year. There is quite a few, but I don't want you to not hear about them specifically. The Brave by James Bird follows a young man who has to compulsively count the number of letters in what you just said to him and report that number back to you before he can speak. His dad has recently given up custody of him to his mother who lives on a reservation. And this is the first time that he is exploring his native culture, that side of him, and also learning who his family actually is while falling in love with the first time for a young woman who claims to be turning into a butterfly. This is snarky and fun. I love how it explored someone coming into their native identity. I loved the representation of the whatever he's got going on. I'm assuming it's a form of OCD. I love the representation of that mental illness. I loved so many of the conversations in here about grief. This was just so good. It was almost a five star. I I will have to reread this to see if it falls more in a four or a five star camp, but it was so good. I had to buy my own copy, even though I listened to the audiobook. So you should check this one out. Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers by Sadie Doyle, whose subtitle is Monstrosity, Patriarchy, and the Fear of Female Power. This, I think, is one of the first feminist nonfictions that I've read. I've read many nonfictions that have also tiptoed around feminism, but I've never picked up a book that was strongly a feminist nonfiction. This, however, is not solely feminist nonfiction. This is also horror analysis nonfiction. And let me tell you, I have been tiptoeing more and more into the horror genre and enjoying a lot of my time there. But there is nothing that I like more these days than hearing other people talk about horror in 
whatever format that is. And this book just does that drippingly. It is gorgeous in how it looks at true crime, horror movies, horror literature, and picks apart the feminine monstrosity and how that is tied into the patriarchy that still very much pulls our puppet strings today. This was just so good. I listened to the audiobook and then immediately was like, I will buy the hard copy and immediately reread it and underline things. And then I didn't. So I want to reread this in 2022 and go through with a fine tip comb and just enjoy enjoyed the knowledge. It was so good. Highly recommend. Next, you should read Perla by Carolina de Robertis. This is a split narrative timeline between a young 20-something protagonist and the ghost who finds its way into her living room. It is about identity. It is about the aftermath of a horrible civil war in, I think, Argentina, but please don't quote me. It is about figuring out who you are, where you came from, where you want to go, and the implications of that. The less you know going into this, the better, because I was surprised by the twists and turns of the narrative, and it was hauntingly beautiful and also devastating. I almost cried while listening to this. So it is, it, it, this book was such a pleasant surprise, even in its like depressing beauty, that I read another book by Carolina de Robertis this year or last year in 2021 as well. And I want to read more by her because I just love her storytelling. It is, and, and her blend of like depressing and beautiful. It's so good. So if for some reason you want to bum yourself out while learning about history, but also have some ghosty magical realism elements, then this is the book for you and you should read Berla. The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This was the first Kingfisher that I've read and I'm going to read like everything that she has written. This was so, this was so good. So this is about a young woman who after a messy divorce, she's figuring out her life and she goes to live with, I think it's her uncle who owns this oddity museum. And she ends up because he's recovering from surgery, being in charge of this oddities museum. And then there's a hole in the wall that leads to a room that cannot exist. And it is just, okay, so this is like, in my mind, I pictured a lot of, I pictured the main character a lot as Stevie Bud from Schitt's Creek, the amazing Netflix series. And then also she partners up with her next door neighbor who, I think next door or downstairs, next door neighbor who owns a coffee shop. And he reminded me a lot of David Rose. So this was almost like, Shit's Greek characters get pulled into this horrible horror story and have to find their way back home. It was just so great. I loved hearing about the Oddities Museum. I loved all of the other characters in this. I loved the horror elements because it is nothing that I have read before. And it was just like, oh, something new I can be horrified by. It was just so, so excellent. I can't wait until I carve out the time to read The Twisted Ones, which was, I believe, the first horror novel that Kingfisher came out with. If it's even a smidge close to being as great as The Hollow Places, I'm going to have such a fun time. Also, bonus for an excellent cat character in The Hollow Places, so you should check it out. I finally read my first Louise Erdrich book. I chose The Birch Bark House, and this is a historical middle grade novel about an Ojibwa family, and it was so excellent. I So I was imagining that this was going to be like, and then the white people came and ruined everything. But it was so interesting to see that this was at a period where white people had invaded the land, but also they were still just doing their own thing. It was so fun to see historical native culture represented in this way. The atmosphere of the story and the characters it was just such a, del a delight. I can't wait. I mean, obviously, there I have so, so many great books to read, but I really want to continue this series. I read the audiobook and that was excellent. And I think I want to continue with audiobooks as much as I can. This was just, it was, I'm sure it's going to get horribly depressing potentially because this wasn't a completely happy-go-lucky book, but it was just such a wonderful insight into Native culture and specifically Ojibwe culture. And just getting to see the life in that history, as opposed to seeing it through the viewpoint of like a museum or a viewpoint of 
And then white people came and ruined everything. It was not what I was expecting and it just delighted me and I can't wait to continue on with this series. I also read a number of excellent children's picture books this year and I want to talk to you about them. So the first is The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander with illustrations by Kadir Nelson. This is a very laconic children's picture book about the undefeated and excellent examples of black culture through the centuries. The illustrations are wonderful. I love how quietly spoken the book is. It is not heavy on text. And I loved learning about historical figures that I didn't know about before. We Are Water People by Carol Lindstrom with gorgeous, vibrant illustrations by Michaela Goad was such a hopeful while also being a frustrating read. It's about native cultures trying to protect their water sources and stop the pipelines. And it's about why water is so important and why protecting water is something that we need to prioritize as well. The illustrations are luminous and the message is so wonderful as well. I highly recommend it. Chester Nez and the Unbreakable Code, a Navajo code talker story by Joseph Bruchak with illustrations by Liz Amini Holmes, sideswiped me with how good it was. There was this one moment in the text where it's talking about our main character, Chester, coming back from war and having a ceremony performed for a healing ceremony performed over him. And this offhanded comment that this was also the same ceremony that they performed over children who came back from residential schools. And just like, I, like I had a moment where it was like, oh my God, like this, like coming back from war and coming back from reservation schools is like the same emotional like trauma that needs to be healed. It was just so sad. The illustrate the but, but <laughs> this is about how Navajo members of the military in World War II were able to aid that war effort by using the Navajo language that had previously been tried to be been scrubbed out by white culture to the advantage of that white culture to fight against an even greater evil of the Nazis. It was so interesting to get this enlightening story about World War II that I had not heard about. <laughs> it seems like it's a foot footnote in history and also just recognize how significant military service is among native populations and the idea of people criticizing Native American cultures for not being like American enough and just the the work and sacrifice that they have and continue to put into the country. It's it, it's just uh, is really good. Uh, you should read it. One of the most cozy books this year was Gustavo the Shy Ghost by Flavia Z. Drago. I heard about this from Bear over at A2 Brody, and this is a delightful, cozy, spooky picture book about a ghost who is too shy to make any friends. And the illustrations are detailed and rich with so much nostalgic for me Halloween content that I could imagine if I had had this book as a child just pouring over these illustrations and picking out like the coolest thing in the background that I liked or which costume was my favorite. It was a delight for eyes and also for the heart because of its heartwarming message. It was so sweet and adorable. And the final picture book I want to talk to you about is very, it's very, it reminds me a lot. It's got the same coziness and the same Halloween-y beautiful illustrations as Gustavo the Shy Ghost and that's Sir Simon's Super Scarer by Kale Atkinson. So this is about Sir Simon who is a super scarer but also about the hobbies that Sir Simon picks up while he's haunting this house. And also the the main plot of the story comes in when he ends up befriending accidentally the child who lives in this house who he does not manage to scare the first time. Just for some cozy flavor, two of Simon's favorite hobbies is writing detective novels and also doing cross stitch. It's freaking adorable and you should read it if you want some cozy spookiness in your life. So those were the top of the excellent reads that I was gifted with in 2021. I want to know, out of all of these books, have you read any? I also want to know your top pick for 2021. Make me read it. And until next time, I hope that you had and will have a happy reading year and continue to be lovely.